everybody back once again part two on lawnmower rehab and repair and as you can see I done brought the lawnmower inside the shop so I'm closer to my tools it's a little bit more comfortable in here and all that crap yada yada but what we're going to talk about today is first off the difference between Briggs and Stratton engines the mowers I'm going to be working on are all Briggs and Stratton engines. It doesn't matter if it's a Murray, a Poulon, it, it doesn't really matter. The name brand of the mower doesn't matter nearly as much as the engine that's sitting on top of the mower. But anyways, Briggs and Stratton has primarily two different kinds. One's more of a classic model, you know, the three and a half horsepower, more old school is what I call it. And uh, then we have the newer type, which is what this is. And I'll grab the camera here in a second and show you the differences. They're real easy to recognize. All you really need to look at is the muffler, the gas tank, the carburetor, and you can pretty much figure it out from there. Oh, and the air filter, too. Uh, let's see here. What else are we going to get to? Uh, like I said, we got to change this oil thing. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off. I thought about doing that anyways and picking up afterwards, but I may as well show you how to do that too. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to take off this cover. There's two, I don't know, there might be two covers on this one, but I'm going to take this one off. Uh, part of it's broke where the screw's at. I'll super glue that back together. We're saving money here. We're not buying anything new. I'll super glue that. But, uh... Secondly, after you figure out which kind of engine you have, it's good to know where the part number for the actual en engine is. So if, if you have to look up the engine to buy parts for it, you want to have that number. It's usually stamped on the metal. No, it's always stamped on the metal on the engine. And I'll show you how to find that. Uh, and, you know, you write it down and look it up and all that stuff. Uh... Since we're messing with the oil, I'll quickly show you how to drain the oil. May as well do it. That's really simple. That's fast. There's nothing to it. I'm going to mention a few things about tools. How you can make your own custom tool kit. Uh, when I take these little screws and stuff out of here, some of them are all rusted up. I'm going to show you a quick, cheap, easy way to get rid of the rust. Well, I wouldn't say it's quick, but it's painless. And let's see. And I think that'll be it. I might have to move kind of quick here. I'm trying to keep this to 10 minutes, and I need to keep track of time. But, uh, yeah, that uh, there's something else I was going to mention, too. Damn it. What was it? Uh, oh, well. It'll come back to me, I guess. Anyway, let's get underway. Telling the difference between your Briggs and Stratton engines. Like I said, you have your muffler your gas tank and the carburetor are the main things you want to look at. This one right here, like I said, is what I'd call the newer model. One quick way to tell which one you have, the older models, the more simpler ones, I think, have the little round muffler right here instead of this longer looking one. Some of these will even have like a wire guard across it and you can tell the difference that way. Secondly, the air filters. On this mower, you have an air filter that sits sideways and kind of hangs off the side here. I don't know if you can see that worth a damn or not. Yeah, there. See there? Under this cover right here is the air filter. And it sits sideways. It's a paper air filter instead of the foam one. The others have a foam one. And the gas tank. The gas tank is right here. On the other ones, the gas tank and the carburetor are connected. The, the, uh, the, the carburetor sits on top of the gas tank. Not so much on this one. I think that, uh, the carburetor is down under here somewhere. I have to take this cover off, but I think the carburetor is under here somewhere. Anyway, that is that. Now, real quick, we'll go take a look at the other one so you can see the difference. Like I said, sideways air filter that's just kind of hanging here the gas tank is separate from the carburetor the oblong uh, muffler okay 
Let me put this up here. Now, real quick, we'll go out here and I'll show you. I have two of these other ones. And they're both the same exact engine. The only difference is the cover on one of them. See here. Here's this one. And here's this one. See, and they look different, but they're not. It's the same exact engine. The easiest way to tell is, like I said, look. Round, round muffler. And here's the air filter. See, this right here is the air filter. It's not sideways. It's flat. And it sits right on top of the gas tank. Or the uh, the carburetor does. And of course, the air filter is on top of the carburetor. But this is what I was saying. You got your gas tank. This is the carburetor, and they're one piece. When you take this off, you can take the gas tank and the carburetor off all in one piece. And you see, this is the exact same way. Same setup. Gas tank below, carburetor in the middle, air filter on top. These are the foam air filters. And both of these machines are the same. And that's how you can tell the difference between which ones you have just by kind of looking at it. More importantly, we'll have to get the, uh, uh, the engine model number or whatever. Uh, let's see here. What are we going to do next? Okay, let's go ahead and take this cover off as quickly as we can. And while I do that, I think I'll talk about tools. A lot of people have piles of tools sitting around. They don't exactly go anywhere. They're just loose, random tools. You know, they're not part of a set. Who knows where they came from or whatever. The best thing to do, use that stuff first. Leave all your nice tool kits and all your stuff that, you, you know, you don't really want to use on like crappy stuff or whatever just leave that stuff alone and every time you need to use a tool on one of these mowers or weed eaters or whatever use the old junky stuff that you have see if you can find it and once you do keep it out put it into your own separate tool kit every time you use a tool on one of these machines go ahead and throw it in your tool kit that way you'll have all that crap together next time that's what I've done here in this little one this thing's already too full I'm gonna have to get a bigger one but that way you can make your own custom tool kit all right that's all there was to that two screws I don't know if you can see it or not here's a little broken piece that I'm gonna super glue right back on nothing to it but to do it let's see if y'all can see I might need to zoom <coughs> Also, I'm going to show you how to kill rust. Cheap rust treatment. We're going to do that right now. Because these little screws are kind of rusty and janky looking. Put this over here. Oh, yeah. A little bowl like this is always nice to put your parts into until you're you know, able to put them back on or whatever. Rust. De rusting your tools. Your parts, anything, man. Vinegar, and I've heard apple cider vinegar. The dark stuff works better than the clear. Is what I've what I've been told, and I've used it to clean up some old rulers and stuff, metal rulers and you know straight edges, and it worked pretty good. What we're gonna do here is go ahead and make our own little parts bath type thing. Get your apple cider, apple cider vinegar, throw a little in here, and as you take off your nuts and bolts and stuff, just throw them in there, let them sit for a few days. Nothing wrong with that. 
There's two screws in now. There you go. That's all it is. Cheap, janky, free stuff. Kick ass. A couple days from now, those will be nice and clean. And when you take them out, first thing you want to do is keep them dry. Get like some WD-40. Scrub them real good with like paper towels and stuff. And leave a light coat of oil on there so it won't re-rust instantly. Sometimes it'll do that depending on what kind of metal it is. Wow, look how dirty this is. Holy... Man. Okay. Alright. Now that we have that off, let's see if we can find our engine identification. Sometimes it'll be right here. On the front. Oh yeah. Ooh, let me grab a snake light. <clears throat> if it helps, get you a little dab of whatever. Just because it's handy, I'll use this apple cider vinegar. Here. And then right here on the front, you can see it. Model type and code. Still kind of hard to read, but there's your numbers. Your model type's what you're going to use to look up the engine. The code, I, I don't really know what that's for, but these first little string of numbers is what you need. You plug it into Google and with a little bit of searching and looking you should be able to find what you're looking for but there it is that's where they'll be on the middle and you can't miss it it'll say model this one's a 12 12H802-2384-B1 you throw that into Google and every part that you need for this engine is accessible through that number or code or whatever okay moving right along here all right let's see if we can get this oil tube off of here should just pull out Ugh. anyway my crappy camera work here here's the oil tube oil dip tube you see there it's real dirty. I don't know if you can see it, but it's busted apart. Should be all you have to do is just grab a hold of it and pull it out. You might need like a little uh, flathead type apparatus to pry up on it. I'm going to try to just grab it. See how that goes. And it's covered in oil. It's a good thing to keep your hands clean and stuff. Clean up more oil and messes as you go. Oh, there's a screw up here. I forgot about that. Uh huh. I'm gonna have to take this off first. Yeah. Wow, look at that. It's not even, not even really attached. Let's go ahead and take this out. Clean it off, throw it in our little bucket. take off this other cover here if I can just this plastic bit that goes around the what this is called the whole thing that you pull on and it jerks back is called the starter recoil and we'll get to that at some point too but in order to go ahead and take this off we need to get a hold of this pull cord and get it out of here whole little bits of hardware on here. I suppose that's something else I could put into the vinegar bath, but nah. Not right now. I'd have to do a little bit of bending on it to get this thing out. That's alright. Let's go ahead and feed this back through here if you can. Good deal. Now I can get this thing completely out of the way. What we'll do is we'll clean the heck out of this thing and we'll put a fresh coat of paint on it after we super glue it and set it aside. 
be looking good. Alright, let's see here. I don't know what size these things are. There's four or five I need to take loose. Kind of connected to the gas tank too. Maybe the gas tank's part of it. Tray and the rest. Well, we'll see. Let's see. I need... all this beforehand but oh well like I said we're gonna do this together just like how I would in real life oh, there we go that's the one nut runners I don't know if some people don't know what the hell a nut runner is basically it's a screwdriver with a socket thing on the end of it all like glued together you know what I mean they're handy ooh that like on there Yep, these are more screws for our vinegar bath. They're nice and crusty, rusty on top. Yeah, I suppose it's a good idea to drain the gas tank before you do this, but there ain't nothing in it, but just bear that in mind. Oh, and here's another tip. If you ever have to tip one of these lawnmowers up on their side to check the blade or to drain the oil or whatever, always tip it up with the air filter side up. If you tip it the other way, the oil will drain into your carburetor and mess things up. You have to wait for it to drain back out, and it might make it gunky and dirty. That's not good. Closing in on 10 minutes already, I'm sure. Oh, oh my god. Well, okay. 5 sixteenths. Good to have an assortment of tools, am I right? Okay. Look at that. I can feel one or two little bolts holding this on. Yep, looks like about a 10 millimeter or so. Taking these things off is just, you know, man, if you can't take this off, it's just a matter of looking around and seeing what you got. It shouldn't be too hard to do. I mean, you take off all the bolts you can see, then you try to take it off. Oh, there's something else holding it, so look around. But it's not going to be no act of Congress to get the stuff loose. Resistance on this, man. I don't want to break it. Whew. I 
shit to use in my drill here. I'm trying to do this old school. Everybody has a nice drill. in real time. Let's see it. Gotta do all this by feel. Come on. Show me some love. Hate them nuts and the bolts, they'll, they'll loosen up and then see like there's no resistance at all on the wrench. Then all of a sudden it'll just get hard again, hard to turn. Stupid shit. Alright. Got that one on. Don't look too bad. The rubber o ring's kind of busted up. Speaking of rubber parts, don't use brake cleaner, carb cleaner, or anything like that on rubber. None of your O-rings or anything like that. That's, that's bad business. We'll go ahead and throw that in there in the wash. And throw the rubber thing in my little bucket. Pan, pot, whatever you want to call it. And that's it. This thing's coming with. There's a little hose. That runs from the, I guess the gas tank to the carburetor. That you want to take loose, of course. I mean, you don't have to, I guess, right now, but you know, we're taking the same bitch apart anyway, so may as well. There. And now that's off. That's your gas tank and part of the cover. Look at that. Look how dirty that is. We'll clean that up too, man. She'll be looking good. Throw a little paint on here. I'll mask off this label. Look at this. Ooh, more good information too. Hmm. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, yeah, we'll paint this. I'll mask this off. We want to keep our labels in to make all this nice and clean. It's a good time to check the cap, make sure the little O rings and stuff inside are good. This one looks pretty decent. Nothing wrong with that. Anyway, there's that. Oh, I bet we're over 10 minutes. Okay. Now that's going down. We get back our nut runner. I believe this is the same one. The retaining nut that holds the dip tube retaining thingy on. And to the part source we go. Yep, and this is completely broken. Now I'm going to grab a hold of this tube and just kind of wiggle it and pull on it and it, it comes right on out. Nothing to it. See there's a little o-ring on there. There. And it came out of that right there. You can kind of see in the engine. Ooh, I see some gunk down in there. That ain't good. Look at here. See if you can see it. Look down in there. Yeah. We're going to have to clean all that out for sure. Anyways, now this is done. Jam something in that hole. You don't want nothing else in there. There's already some gunk in there. You don't want nothing else, especially with all this dirt and crap hanging up the side. Anyway, we're not going to do that right now. We're going to drain this oil. This is all you got to do to drain oil on one of these. They don't have oil filters or nothing like that. And it don't matter if you have the dip tube or not. Tip it on your side, air filter up. Can't really do it wrong anyways because oil won't drain the other way. It'll go all over the engine. Get your little pan or whatever to put in there. Oops. Woo! Look at 
Look at that shit. Boy, that's nasty. That don't even look right. That looks like some diarrhea or something. Don't even look like oil. Yeah, there we go. That's kind of perfect right there. Oh, my snake light. Anybody remember snake light? This was my dead snake light, man. I had this thing for like, since the 80s or whatever. Look at this. That is some nasty. Who oh boy. Anyway, we'll let this sucker sit good and overnight. We'll let that run out. Then we'll shoot carb cleaner and all kinds of stuff up in the crankcase and clean it up. All right, there you go. We got this little project underway now. We got a little things done. It didn't take that long. And I think I've addressed everything I wanted to. So we're going to go ahead and close this down and get up out of here. Uh, like I said, I'm going to let this thing drain overnight. We'll take a closer look at this oil thing here. There may be a way to repair it. I have things like epoxy and, you know, crazy glue and stuff like that. You never know. Instead of buying some new shit, we just repair the old stuff, you know. Glue it together. Nothing wrong with that. But, there it is. I'll let those little screws and stuff sit in the vinegar for a couple of days and... We'll get back to it on the, on the next go around. Until next time, folks.